Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and Wargaming have finally made World of Tanks a single player game in the form of their one versus one strategist game mode which you can play for the next few days before you're going to be able to play one versus seven as well. So the art of strategy, I've talked about this on the channel before in great detail so I thoroughly recommend going and watching uh, my video which outlines kind of how to play it, the basics. Today I'm going to be talking about the actual event, the art of strategy event and that's because this game mode is only going to be available for a couple of weeks and I want to make sure that all of you know that if you want to be able to get such juicy rewards as 20 hours of 50% extra credits, you want to get yourself a universal training manual, or you want to get yourself 2,500 bonds, I can roughly estimate how long it's going to be able to take you today. So to be able to get all of those items which I just talked about, you're going to have to get unique collections, which you're going to be able to get through completing a series of missions. We can see missions for the strategist and missions for the tankers. Missions for the strategists, as we can see, have started today, and you're going to have to get yourself 120 strategist points to be able to get one collection and I believe you can complete it twice every day and so if you really want to be able to uh, complete those collections you're gonna have to play the strategist game mode every single day at least for the next few days in a one versus one format so it looks like to be able to get these 120 points you get 60 points for winning battles and you get 40 points for losing battles. Now, how exactly Wargaming are going to try to prove that people are trying really hard in their battles when you can get 40 points for losing uh, remains to be seen. Nevertheless, with the event running for the next two weeks and the fact that you're going to have to collect yourself 18 different collections, you're going to have, it looks like you're going to have to play for at least 9 out of 14 days if you want to be able to get that meaty 2,500 bond reward, which a lot of people will be after. In addition to the bonds, there are actually a series of tankers, which looks like they come with Brothers in Arms, maybe as a zero skill perk. They will definitely be nice for all of you free-to-play players out there who just want to be able to pump up your screws. Or even pump up your crews while hopefully not getting screwed in the game. All right, so without further ado, I think I'll just jump into a battle and try and show you what it's all about. And and see how long these games are actually going to take. So, first off, it's always one versus one for the first few days. You want to spend that first one minute actually deploying your defenses. Unfortunately, I've got a real short range map here, which is kind of frustrating for me because I did try and take like a gun turret and everything to be able to, should we say, play more on the uh, on the long range. All right, so I think I'm going to have to take the hill or am I? Am I going to take the hill? Bit of a tough one or do I play a more of a defensive kind of role? I think I'm going to get my watchtowers in these kind of locations. Now I've got to decide about where I want to deploy my team. Uh, IS-7 is probably going to be a little bit slow. I guess I'll try and push my TVP up on the hill as quickly as I can while having a Yak Panzer sit at the back of the map there. Maybe a Badger sitting in that location. My T-100LT has to rush on top of the hill as well. Um, Super Conqueror back there. IS-7 there. Uh, click. I guess we don't have to click battle. Okay, good. Uh, reset deployment. Don't want to do that. Now the battle just begins. Okay, great. Let's go. Let's get up on the hill as quickly as we can. All right, so hopefully our light tank and TVP will be able to get up there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to have my IS-7 sitting in that location. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to send my IS-7 back there. I'm going to have my Badger who is over... Oh, God, the 60 TP is in such an awkward location. I'm going to have my Badger go there. I'm going to have my 60 TP go there. Uh, I didn't select the 60 TP. That's always good. And my Super Conqueror, I guess, is going to have to go into this position. Luckily for me, hopefully my T100LT doesn't screw this up. And what I can do is I can activate my TVP now and then hopefully start to get to shooting. Maybe I can take out the gun turret at the back of the map. That'll be a good one. Um, can only really nail it through the side here. Uh, or even not. Maybe I have to hit the weak point on top. Ooh, there is actually a weak point on top, which is kind of nice to know about. You can see my artillery barrage coming in against his his gun barrel there. That's decent. Looks like the enemies start to want to try and push through against us. Do I have to assimilate that IS-7? Maybe I do. Oh, he's getting nailed by the RT. It's okay, though. Maybe we can manage to hold this. Jaegeru hopefully will dump somebody at the back of the map. I think I'll just leave this player here and then I'll go reassimilate the TVP. And maybe I can get some more shots into the top of this big gun. I'm going to try and get it out of the game. So it looks like it does have a bit of a weak point on top. So as long as we take our time, we will probably be able to eventually get rid of it. As slowly as surely as we can. Okay, cool. Nice. Let's get back. Maybe I need to actually try and advance all of my tanks through. 
Now, you know what? I think I'm actually doing pretty good right now. I feel like if that guy gets a little bit more into that bush, and I think if that badger maybe gets back into this bush, the Yegaru's in a good position. Um, my 60 TP is okay. IS-7 just got spotted, and he's getting gunned down. At least we now know where their, um, at least we now know where their, their, what's it called? The ARL is, that kind of turret at the back. Let's get this TVP back and see if I can get rid of their gun turret on top of the hill. Oh, here comes a T-100LT. Do you remember me here? Luckily, the gun turret didn't quite get me. Okay, I need to take over my T-100LT now. Uh, maybe hopefully not get hit by the gun turret and be able to go finish off that T-100LT. Well, there we go. He oh, I, they've got female voice voice acting as well in this game mode. So it looks like I finally got rid of their gun tower. Now, what's the plan? I guess the plan is to just try and like poke out as much as I can. I should probably try and push some of my dudes around. Oh no, I just got spotted. That's a complete disaster. Hopefully I can get this E50M while I'm retreating. One more maybe. There we go. Hopefully the ARL will be able to put some pain into them. Okay. So cool. This seems to be going pretty okay. Well, I don't think they're actually going to push right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to try and advance this 60 TP along here. So we're going to try and get him over into that location. Holy crap, I need to assimilate my TVP again. A few seconds until I reload. Maybe I can get the 60 TP if this guy decides to push. Is he going to push? Looks like he will. One. Oh, I missed the shot. I missed the shot. Missed the shot. Track him there, though. Track him there. Hopefully the IS-7 will help me out a little bit. Oh, there we go. Look at that artillery coming in hot. That 60 TP is not doing so well now. Unfortunately, my IS-7 is kind of playing like a bit of a clunker here. Do you think I should maybe switch across to the IS-7 and try and get him to actually turn his armor around or he's not going to lose more of his hit points? That sounds like a good thing. Now I can hopefully assimilate the sick TVP again. Man, if only I could do that to regular players inside the game, right? Take over somebody's tank and then teach them how to be able to angle it, right? Oh my lord! Who's 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 getting finished off? Why is the Yagpanzer getting hit? Where's the Yagpanzer getting hit from? Where is he even getting hit from? There's a, somebody knocking out this guy's gun. That's awful. They must have got a badger across over onto the other side. Okay, well, I'm just going to leave this guy here. Uh, where's my 60 TP? He needs to kind of go into this position, I think. And then what I need to do is I need to assimilate my TVP again. And then try and get above this IS-7 here. I think I should be able to nail him in the side. I don't think he's got that many tanks left that are probably sniping it out. Let's see if we can find this IS-7. And we can. We got his butt. Oh, the E50M hit me, though. Oh, no. I could be dead here. Didn't expect that E50M to hit me so cleanly. Hopefully, I should be okay. Oh, that's a bit of a disaster that that E50M caught me there. Absolute disaster. Okay, so that's not the, the best plays by me. I should probably tell my TVP to fall back a little bit. And maybe I can get my T100LT over into this kind of a position. Now, what I should probably think about doing is maybe um, try and get the Super Conqueror into the game. Maybe I can get the Super Conqueror, like, up to there. Uh, I could push the IS-7 across, but I think what I should do is just take over the 60 TP and see if I can maybe find a shot on the Super Conqueror. There we go, that's what we want. So that guy's obviously probably spotted by me, I'd say, from this bush location. Oh, I so nearly had a shot into the side of their turret. Really unfortunate there. Uh, should I try and push my badger forwards, try and get my badger into a better position? Or should I try and get my badger down the side? It's tough, it's tough. I'm thinking about pushing the, uh, pushing the Super Conqueror up to here, and then maybe he can get some shots on there. Um, what I should also probably do is advance my Badger along. I think if I can get my Badger up here along with my IS-7, it could be really good. All right, I'm going to take over... Oh, oh, wait a minute. Is that guy actually pushing forwards? That's crazy. Okay, we just locked that guy down. Looks like he didn't realize that we had a Super Conqueror up on the hill. Maybe he thought it was just a TVP at this stage. I can just manage to nail him. Um, unfortunately, the AI doesn't seem to be doing a very good job of nailing. Oh, actually, you know what? Oh, no, my TVP died because he tried to come around the corner to help me out. I've got to lock down this guy's tracks multiple times here. Wish I could ask that guy for help while I'm controlling this, but I guess I'm meant to be jumping out. You know what? Let's take over the IS-7 then. He keeps trying to look through this gap. Why doesn't he just go around the corner and finish him off, right? Could have just done that. One of them is down. 
Easy peasy. All right, so here's what we're going to do now. We're going to set our Super Conqueror up in this kind of a position. What we're going to do is we're going to advance our Badger probably to like this location. Uh, we're going to advance our IS-7 across with him as well to about there. Um, have I got any tanks that aren't in the combat right now? Looks like maybe this T-100LT can go across to like uh, maybe these bushes. Get the Super Conqueror to start engaging him. All right, let's attack with the 60 TP. Uh, let's actually take over the 60 TP and get forwards. Oh, I could actually kill that E50M, but it looks like he's already going to die. Uh, I should probably claim the kill there. There we go. Nice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tell the 60 TP to go after him. I'm going to tell the T100LT to get some shots into him if he can. We'll tell the Super Conqueror to get some shots into the IS-7 as well. Oh, the 430U is trying to cross, so maybe I can take over this Jagdpanzer E100 and maybe I can get a shot in. Looks like maybe the Jagdpans already managed to get a shell into the 430U as they were advancing. Can we manage to finish this 430U off? Is he going to come around the corner? Doesn't look like it. They've actually got a flamethrower there, which is a little bit awkward. So let's get the 60TP across to be able to go after this flamethrower. And then i got to try and take over this Jagdpanzer E100 again. And here's my shot. No, oh, I wasn't quite quick enough. Oh, what a disaster. It's okay, though. Okay, so it looks like it's just a badger somewhere. So I think I've got to advance in. I think I've got to advance in as quickly as we can. Let's get rid of that. That guy can be able to get a shot onto the flamethrower. Should probably get my T100LT through over to here, I'd say. Try and get some vision off. And I should probably take over the Jagdpanzer E100 over here now. Because I think the 430U is about to try and make a push play. So it's a 50-50, really, as to whether this 430U is going to kill me or not in a single shot. But um, it's not a 50-50 whether I kill him in a single shot as long as I connect the shell cleanly. Come on, buddy. Boom! There we go. And that is the game done, more or less. Let's try and dig this badger out. Try and find out where the hell the badger is. Maybe he's over on the corner. So we finally found out where their MRL is, their little rocket barrage thing. Oh, we found the badger there. Okay, let's get the get some pressure up there. Get some pressure up there. You know what? I can just select all my forces and tell them to go after the badger. That's the best way to do it, right? And there we have it. World of Tanks as a single player game. What do I think about it? it, it it's okay. It's okay. Just obviously, I'm playing against Jab Jow, um, if that's not their anonymized name. Uh, I do feel like at the moment that people are going to be quite poor at it, and then later on, the RTS mode will definitely, um, well, shall I say, the RTS gameplay, but will become a lot more prominent inside it. I think being able to switch across and trying to think about your shots, and then switching over to this one, and there's no doubt that Wargaming have done a really good job with making it quite fluid. Um, with trying to move between your different units. The, the problem that I have is that this is now, it's a single player game. And I think always one of the things that is very special about World of Tanks to me is that it's the multiplayer aspect. It's that you don't know what your friends are on your team are going to do. It's about having to try to work with them to be a team player rather than just be good individual and you owning a whole variety of tanks and then using them all at the same time, it, it's, it's a bizarre thing. They're kind of trying to turn World of Tanks into like an RTS game mode. But it's going to be impossible for anyone to, to really to play it well um, just coming into World of Tanks. I really don't know what they're trying to achieve with this game mode unless it is to test some AI. Are they trying to get all of the StarCraft players and all of the uh, old school Command and Conquer players suddenly interested in like the RTS genre again, which really is not in a good position? Maybe. Do they think they're going to have a whole host of players who are going to be joining for that? Or is this meant to be just be a little bit of a fun for the World of Tanks player base? Well, I can tell you that it's probably going to get quite old quite quickly for me, and it's definitely not going to replace the main game mode. Sure, I'll probably end up playing this a few times just to be able to earn all of the points that I need to be able to get the bonds to remain competitive. And really, at the end of the day, I think that's what Wargaming um, are doing with this game mode. Uh, I don't think that the player base on the whole will play it for more than probably about a few hours or a day before it gets boring and they want to go back into the uh, random queue. But that's just my opinion and let me know what you think in the comments down below. And I really think that most people are going to feel that they just have to play it and have to grind it to be able to get these tasty rewards. 
but there's nothing new there with these game modes and wargaming trying to uh, force you to play them to be able to get sought after rewards so you can use them in the regular queue which is where I think that wargaming should be focusing. If I might be so bold, the game is great because of 15 versus 15. And over the years, I just see Wargaming trying to turn it into 10v10, 7v7, and now trying to turn it into like a one versus one. I wonder if Wargaming have really considered how awesome their 15 versus 15 tank combat is, the variety that is there, and that while you, when you love it or whether you love it or you hate it, I think it's the team-based combat that still keeps people coming back for more. And also importantly, that World of Tanks is basically a slow FPS game. And now that they're turning it into quite a, a high uh, APM, actions per minute, RTS title, while you also still have to be good at World of Tanks in a one versus one uh, fight as well. Yeah, I can't really see what they're doing with the, the art of strategy. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, it looks like you are going to have to play quite substantially. It looks like you're going to have to get four wins per day, or I guess it's going to be like six losses per day. It's going to take you at least an hour of grinding in this game mode, an hour to two hours of grinding in this game mode to be able to get those rewards. Is it worth it? That is something that only you are going to be able to decide whether it's worth your time to be able to grind for the credit boosters. Do you know what I would probably recommend? Um, I would probably recommend actually just grinding for those 20 credit boosters and then probably not doubling to be able to go for the universal training manual or the bonds. But that's probably just what I'm going to do, especially on my free-to-play account. Anyway, that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what you think about the Art of Strategy game mode after you've played it. Do you think that it's absolutely awesome fun and you wish it was in the game constantly? Or do you think it's okay at first, gets boring, and you feel a bit baited by Wargaming that they're kind of forcing you to play it to be able to get some rather desirable rewards? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been Epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.